Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about a civilian item, uh, an item of civilian camping kit, uh, which would come to be used uh, by British soldiers. Um, it's an older equivalent of the jet boils, which are very popular today. Um, a far better way of cooking things than using the issue hexi stove. One of the problems with hexi is, of course, that once it's lit, it's lit and very little terms into control in terms of heat, uh, unless you're just going to add more blocks and so forth. So uh, what we're looking at is the Camping Gas Blue A stove. Now this is the precursor or smaller equivalent to the Super Blue A's, which are essentially still what we have today, um, which were introduced in the very late 1950s, early 1960s. This is a very late 1950s um, introduction. Uh, the Super Blue A itself, I believe, came out in 1959 and is, with some modifications and, uh, you know, modernizations uh, of its design, is still used today. And you can still get cartridges which will fit the 1959. Uh, the cartridges essentially are still the same. Not true of this. Uh, the Blue A itself, the smaller stove, um, unfortunately, the cartridges are no longer made for this, though this one does still have a little bit of gas in. I have tried it. I'm not going to do that again because I'd like to keep it as is, uh, but it does still work, which is rather nice as well. Now, we're going to have a look at this in a bit more detail now, um, but these were, uh, it's, it's certainly known that some soldiers bought these to use, um, and there's various different reasons for that, what we'll get into. We'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail now. Okay, so here we have the Blue A, uh, and as I say, this is... It, it looks slightly archaic compared to the, the Super Blue A's which would follow. Because of the fact it's in this tin, the way the tin is painted and so forth, looks more akin to something from the 40s perhaps than from the, the late 1950s, 1960s. But this was the original sort of Blue A finish, the dark blue, as opposed to the light blue we would see later. It's uh, The way this functions is you take the top off, fold out the little um, stands here, fold them out, there we go. And you can obviously put your mess tin, your pan, whatever on top of there. Um, and it, it's relatively stable. It's got a wide enough base that you can you can rest something a decent size on here. And it will be fairly stable on a rough, fairly flat ground. Uh, you can then obviously access the control here. You've got a little control valve there. You can just access through the side. You've got air holes there to allow air in underneath uh, to feed the flame and ventilate a little bit. Um, so as I say, it's quite a... Quite a neat little design, quite compact for the time. Uh, the only issue with this really, if we just fold these, fold these away a minute, fold them all the same way. Take the bottom off here, so it's a, an open-ended tin. We can remove the burner. So it comes in these uh, four basic pieces. You've got the burner and cartridge there, the cartridge there, uh, the tin, and the tin. Uh, the top of the tin includes the there's an aluminium insert here with these. Um, Four stands that fold out, obviously, to support the support the pan or mess tin. And you can see here the very small cartridge. Now, this is a slight problem, really, um, for, in terms of um, time of use. There's no reason why this couldn't have been a bit taller and the, the, the length of uh, the, the valve on there, uh, the length of this assembly here uh, shortened slightly. Um, you can see, obviously, the air intake there um, to mix with the gas uh, and then the burner head there. Um, and this just clips in to the, the canister. Now these are no longer manufactured, although they're the same, I believe they're the same diameter as the later cartridges. They're, they're shorter than the very short Blue A cartridges you can get today, uh, which is a shame. It's a shame you can't get fuel for these because this would be a fun thing to use at events. Um, but there it is. I've used the other, um, one of the previous events I've done at Hack Green, I've used one of the early 1959, 1960 uh, super blue A's and in fact I use them fairly regularly now they're perfectly serviceable uh, but this unfortunately isn't now I'll just reassemble this now and we'll have a look at one of the reasons you can see how compact this is I'm, as I'm holding it here uh, you see one of the reasons this was used aside from the fact that it is obviously um, a very compact uh, and very um, uh, far superior design to say the hexamine stoves uh, is it neatly fits inside a 1958 pattern bottle, water bottle pouch, as you can see there. In fact, it could almost have been made for it. It's a very, very neat fit. There's a little bit of room around the edges, but um, as you can see there, it fits pretty much perfectly into a 1958 pattern and an early 1958 water bottle pouch at that. These are obviously slightly smaller than the later design. So you can see from the point of view of carriage there as well, uh, it neatly fits into the equipment. 
uh, and that is another reason these were popular is they, they do neatly fit into the equipment uh, like that as you can see and obviously if carrying something is easy on your equipment if you can just get hold of another water bottle pouch to carry one of these then all the better um, you're not having to squeeze it in elsewhere and it will always be with you then so you've got your rations and your kidney pouches maybe a second water bottle pouch with one of these in uh, your mess tins and your kidney pouches as well it all fits nicely on your belt so it's all with you there um, so another advantage of it is it does neatly fit into the water bottle pouch of the 1958 pattern web equipment. So there we are, that's a look at the Blue A uh, camping gas butane, so butane fueled stove. Um, an early, early type of this sort of camping stove with obviously no pumping necessary as you'd have with a Primus. Very lightweight, very small, um, very portable. Uh, and that's, as we've already said, that's why it was popular. Uh, certainly know of several accounts of, of soldiers using these uh, and later camping gas stoves as well um, in favour of the uh, using these uh, over the, the issued hexi stoves. And obviously this is something of a precursor, as mentioned at the start of the video, to the current trend towards using jet boils and things like this, um, because obviously they are far superior to um, solid fuel stoves and so forth, um, both in terms of controllability, speed of boiling um, and the fact that obviously you've got um, you've got a, a fuel source which you know obviously you can turn on and off not only do you have the control of the over the heat that's produced but you can obviously just turn these off when you're done whereas hexi you'd have to douse it and some or or something like that and it's a, a waste of the fuel there um and just a far superior from that point of view cleaner burning you don't get the same sort of smells and things and fumes and so forth so uh, a neat little design uh, and one i thought it would be interesting to have a look at here because obviously it's an interesting civilian item but there is some military history to it as well if you found that interesting uh, and you'd like to see more of my videos, more of my uploads, uh, then please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done already. Uh, and if you're new to subscribing or you've already subscribed, do make sure you've hit the little notification button, the little bell down below. That gives you the option to basically uh, be alerted to when I upload future videos. Um, there's also the Facebook and the Instagram page and the Twitter as well, uh, Twitter account now as well. Um, all of those are linked down below should you wish to keep up with the channel on social media. Uh, there's also, if you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, uh, there's also the option to do that through Patreon and PayPal. Those are both linked down below as well. And a very big thank you to everyone who supported me via those two methods. It's very, very much appreciated. And a big thank you to everyone who supported the channel by subscribing and, and watching and commenting and so forth as well. That is also, of course, very much appreciated. Um, there's also down below, in terms of getting in contact, uh, there's also a, an email address for the, the channel as well, uh, where you can drop me an email should you wish to, uh, sharing photographs and things like that. People have got in touch uh, on there with various questions and things, so don't hesitate to drop me a line if you wish to. Um, but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, I think. So until next time, bye for now.